my pleasure again to introduce Dr. Luis Pimenta, uh, one of the giants in our field, and just put in perspective that we get to to learn from, you know, Dr. Pimenta, Dr. Fessler, Dr. Obumi, uh, really kind of leaders and pioneers in spine surgery, and um, ask some direct questions on how they approach spine surgery. So, without further ado, Dr. Pimenta. Thank you again. Thank you again for the invitation. Uh, great honor to be here. Good meeting. Impressed. So I will talk about PTP. That is the new uh, way to do lateral in the prone position. And these are my disclosures. Uh, and basically, what are the advantages versus disadvantages? Everything has disadvantages as well. So here, basically, the main advantage is that when you position the patient in prone, is a familiar uh, position for most of the surgeons, right? Is how we learn at school. Uh, with this position, we can do simultaneous access. We can do anterior and posterior, starting with posterior or with the anterior. Uh, we can, because of this, we can do revisions, etc. It's much more. Uh, a full comprehensive uh, procedure. Uh, we learned quickly that the increase of lure doses is so important that we rarely have to do a, a ACR. There is no need anymore to do ACRs. It's better to do the tra traditional posterior osteotomies when it's needed. Uh, Spondy reduction, uh, about 70, 75% of those cases reduce in the table by the position. Uh, we learned that the plexus migrates posterior with the muscle, uh, which is very interesting because, as you know, uh, in L4-5, the, the real question is how safe can we go when the plexus is more anterior? Because of this position, the plexus is about 20% more posterior, which makes 4-5 uh, easier. Uh, and I will touch on the several tips and tricks specific for 4-5. Um, so because we have a, a positioner that does coronal rotation, we, we, we have 100% access to 4-5. It doesn't matter if is high crest, and we will talk about high crest. What is high crest, what is transitional level, right? The differences. Uh, we learn a lot during these uh, six years uh, in regard to the changes of uh, anatomical uh, uh, organs in relate, related to the position itself. Uh, one of these is the retroperitoneal space. The peritoneum, uh, because of gravity, uh, migrates more and cheer. We have more space. We study this, and can, I can show numbers also in the study. Uh, starting with the position, you see that is a very easy to position uh, compared to the lateral position. Uh, you just drop the patient in these two positioners that are adapted to the Jackson table. You see the belly bowing. Uh, it's very easy to see the increase of lordosis by this position, but I'm not talking anything special. Everybody knows this position. Everybody knows that lordosis is better in, in, the, in the prone position. Uh, pictures of simultaneous access. What is more frequent is actually not doing the same procedure, somebody doing a chill lift when the other surgeon is doing the four or five level, this is potentially possible, is not the best, the most uh, common uh, simultaneous access. Most commonly the PA finish close the skin when the surgeon is already opening for the posterior part of the procedure. Uh, talking about uh, spondylolisthesis, there are two different uh, sponges, of course, one is mobile, another that is not mobile. Most cases behave like this one here, 
when your position uh, in the table opens up for a quite a lordotic uh, case. Uh, remember, this is adjacent to, uh, to level T leaves. Uh, so, but in cases of spongy grade two, for instance, that would be a kind of a contraindication for lateral, you can start from posture, reduce this in the table. If you need, you do the facectectomy and you reduce and then you do your lateral. So it's very flexible, the procedure. Uh, this is the, the, the image that I already show, uh, showing that in the prone position, the, the muscle is more posture, bringing the plexus more posture. This study was repeated by, by HSS uh, in New York. They, they found the same data that shows that the, the plexus is more posture in the prone position. Uh, we also, uh, this is the result of the study uh, showing an, an important uh, change of, of uh, the, the psoas muscle, but also the gain of lordosis, segmental lordosis is significant. This is uh, uh, the study from, I think is HSS, showing that uh, the, the nerve migrates to the green area uh, the plexus uh, giving more space for L4-5, safe space. And this is the study of the classification, anatomical classification. Uh, this study shows, uh, it talks about high crest. What means high crest and when is a contraindication for lateral, right? Uh, the contraindication for lateral comes from transitional levels. We learned in the past that Mickey Mouse psoas shape uh, is a contraindication, but actually with this position, we relearn things. So if you look to the type, the, the, the yellow case in the middle uh, is a Mickey Mouse, but you see that the vessels are in front of the the vertebral body, this is a type two uh, psoas muscle, but still possible is not a transitional level because the vessels aren't here. The real contraindication, the transitional level is a type three that the vessels are lateral. So it's like the five one level. So that is the one that is a contraindication for, uh, for lateral surgery for the PTP. And this is a study that I mentioned from HSS. They painted the femoral nerve and they did this in lateral, showed the image in lateral and in prone position. You see that the, the nerve is uh, migrated more posture, more space. And here shows the coronal rotation that I mentioned. So when you do a coronal rotation, you open space for L4-5 you can see that you can reach for five from here because the crest went down here compared to where the crest was before. And this also is another study. So we did several studies. This is a study that shows that the coronal rotation is more aggressive than breaking the table in lateral position. Uh, you see the green, uh, the green mark here is how powerful is uh, the, the, coronal the coronal rotation is so powerful that as we measure the SSCPs, sometimes the SSCPs can be down even without uh, cutting the, before cutting the skin because you, by coronal rotation aggressively, you can stretch the femoral nerve as well. So you have to pay attention at this point is already under monitoring. So we had to do different changes uh, from lateral to, to PTP, to prone, uh, because of gravity. So one of the, the things that we changed was the retractor. A three-blade retractor doesn't work. The three-blade retractor changes blades, so it's much heavier, and with the gravity would migrate and cure and open ALLs, etc. 
uh, we have just two blade retractor that is much lighter, uh, longer as well. Uh, that's a, a point that we will discuss later. But you see that we have orthogonal mark markers uh, that allow us to to see these triangles here. If the if the retractor is exactly perpendicular to the disc, which is very important because we only have two blades, not three blades anymore. And because of that, we, only, we have two movements to the front or to the back. Uh, in general, and this is a, a, a difference and an advantage when we use two blade retractor, we target more in the front, far from the plexus because uh, we want to open first the interior blade fix to the disc and then open the retractor backwards. We count the number of clicks and we fix again. So we have two shims in the disc, so makes the retractor solid, very strongly attached to the disc, uh, allows us to do a discectomy, preparing plates, etc. Uh, much better. And also, with the positioners, playing with the positioners, we can pre-correct deformities, which is a, a, a next step that we are working in a positioner specific for deformities. That's coming. So here is the study of the retroperitoneal studies, uh, one of my preference studies here. I always say that you want to be safe in lateral make sure that you arrive close to this muscle here, the quadratus. So if you arrive first here, uh, you will never have to, to be uh, uh, close to the, to the peritoneum or open any bowel. So uh, that is what we, what we did in the study was not only this, I'm saying this is important, but we measured the distance from this muscle here to the border of the peritoneum. And we compared in lateral these distances in, in between uh, uh, 12 specimens. We, we found 2.9 in lateral, this distance, versus uh, three times more in prone position. So this, because of gravity, all the bowel brings the peritoneum down which is another advantage. The disadvantage in this case is the distance uh, from skin to the peritoneum because the patient in, in the front position spreads out lateral. So you, we use longer retractors. And also because of that, touching the, the, the psoas muscle uh, requires uh, two fascial incisions, which means you s first go here, touch the psoas, and then you have another fascial incision through the same skin incision to drop your uh, retractor, dilator, etc., with the control of the finger inside the retroperitoneal space. Now, so here is the study. We stick guide wires in the three levels at the 50 yard line. And what we learn is that we violate in lateral, we all of them violated the, the organs, right? Uh, L2, 3, the kidney, uh, but also bowel and peritoneum in lateral, uh, and much less uh, in the prone position with more, more distance. This is another study on, on the segmental lordosis. We learned that compared to lateral in the prone position, segmental lordosis is at least twice bigger uh, than uh, in, in lateral. So it, it normally opens for more lordosis. That's why we don't need to cut the LL to gain the lordosis, which is a big advantage. I think we'll make some of the classifications that we heard uh, by Mumameni, uh, next, next time he will recorrect his, his um, classification of MIS procedures. Anyway, so here you can see that uh, you can 
it's very important as we learn uh, the, the two levels below to keep uh, very the, the best lerdosis. Uh, we, you can see here using spendable uh, laterals, we can really gain quite a, a, a good lerdosis without having to open the LL. And the correction is is very nice with these several levels of anterior approach. Uh, here another case adjacent level that is pretty collapsed. That in the pos in the prone position in the table opens, and then uh, was able to do uh, a good correction. One of the latest uh, studies that we did was. Uh, the study on expandable, lateral expandables. Uh, in the beginning, I thought that expandable is the best gauge for the worst surgeons because the surgeons don't need to do much. They just do a, a shitty scactomy and then they place the cage and open. It's very easy to do. But honestly, I was surprised with the result. When I started seeing that, I thought, ah, I don't believe they, they can do this from this collapsed level to that amount of lordosis with the segmentals, uh, probably we are doing ACRs here, right? Uh, indirectly by expanding, because we didn't see a uh, violation of end plates. So something has to, to lose here. And it's interesting that because of that, we learned something that at least I learned, probably uh, you know this, that the ALL is not a single level uh, ALL. ALL has several levels. Uh, and with this type of uh, expansion, what happens, we open the internal ALL. The internal ALL is the only ALL that goes attached from one vertebral body to the other vertebral body. The external ALL, the belt that we see in the model, et cetera, at attach here in the iliac and goes to the thoracic without stopping level by level, which for me is, was a surprise, which means also that you open the ALL, internal ALL, but you still have the belt in the front that prevents the cage to migrate to the front. So ACR also was done in a ligament that doesn't need to be cut. Anyway, but we learned this uh, anatomical particular important part. Uh, and so the, the increase of lordosis is significant level per level in very collapsed cases. Here is the study that we dissect the ALL. Uh, you can see that this is the cut, but we, we can really see the, the layers of the ALL um, and the preservation of the external ALL in all these cases. And so some case example here a 60 year, uh, eight years old uh, male. Uh, long story of low back pain, uh, worsening, etc. You see the 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 images. You see that the two levels here, right? Uh, and with the compensations above. And what was done here? See the 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 the, the here the four five, and the shape. When we do the, the four or five, the first thing we have to look is to the psoas muscle. And the next thing is the vessels. So the vessels in front of the vertebral body is critical to make sure that we can do this uh, lateral. It's not a transitional level. The second thing is looking to the facets, right? Uh, you can see the facets are really, uh, you can see from side to side. But remember, because we have now the patient in, in the prone position, if you have any doubt, you go for direct compression. So the question, uh, one of the, the, the questions at the meeting before was the indirect compression. 
really we only consider uh, indirect compression now when we see the liquid in the facets or when it's a spongy or a lateral listesis that you know that by repositioning the vertebral body, you really have an indirect compression. So we don't talk about indirect compression anymore. And here is what was done with expandable. See how much opens. The, we have two expandable. One is 20 degree, another is 15 degrees that gain also posture this height, which is interesting. See the amount of, of lordosis created is really impressive. And this is the result. And the EOS helps to show the results and the nice lordose is created with expandable. I think expandable is a, is a very good option when uh, lordose, extra lordosis is needed. So some tips and, and tricks that I think are important, the, the L45 that usually is the level that scary more surgeons and what to do when you have uh, the nerve in front of the, the femoral nerve to close uh, and you have low numbers. Uh, we know that when the femoral nerve is more anterior, it's also higher inside the psoas muscle. So you can navigate under the, the nerve. The way to navigate under the nerve is tilting the table doing what we call table rotation technique. You, you rotate about 10 degrees, which means that the spinous process, instead of being in AP in the middle of the vertebral body, will be one third to third. And then you forget that you did this. You go through the soles, kind of a olive through the psoas muscle. You arrive there. Once your retractor is in place, Remember to bring the table back, the retractor will fall down and you simply reposition the retractor. That's the best way to do 4-5, makes your 4-5 much easier. And after that, you control on SSCPs if the plexus, uh, if the femoral nerve is suffering or not. This is basically a schematic uh, drawings from this maneuver here. See that I did the table rotation. When I go parallel to the ground, I have much more space because the projection of the nerve will, will fall all posterior. But when, when uh, the table comes back, the retractor itself is pushing the, the plexus backwards. And that's it. Thank you. Any question? question. So um, for someone you know, uh, who is trying to adapt this coming from either a lateral surgeon or keep doing key lifts, um, how many cases do you think it like, typically takes for someone to be comfortable? Um, yeah, thank you for the question. So one thing that we learned uh, at the lab is that it's easier to teach a chilifer than a, a very experienced lateral surgeon. The very experienced lateral surgeon comes with all bad habits, uh, <laughs> which uh, I include myself, but, but uh, you have to redo, rethink and be modest enough to say uh, it's a different procedure. It's still a lateral procedure, but has particular advantages. This is what is running is the table rotation video showing the, that is a very elegant way to do for five. Any other question? Yeah. So uh, we, we like to talk about single position uh, surgery, right? Um, because of that, uh, we are working with Jurgen Harms uh, to do a, and you will fall down if you hear from me, 
the words tea leaves. So <laughs> I am uh, creating with Jurgen Harms a bilateral tea leaf ACR. So we open the ALL front posture with expandable bilateral expandables. Uh, is an option. Uh, I'm still a uh, alifer, so I I love alif. Alif is traditional. Even if I spend another 30 minutes to to flip the patient, is my preference. But there is an option to do uh, a better chi lifts in five one. Thank you.